Hey guys, welcome to the 22nd lecture of the TIP series. This is Anushti Kaliski and today we're going to understand image restoration. So what is image restoration? See, when we studied image enhancement in our previous videos, we, ha we were not aware of what kind of noise is present in the image. So when we are enhancing the image, we are just enhancing it blindly. Okay, but in image restoration, we are already aware of the noise present in the image and therefore we are able to image we are able to restore the image more efficiently so an example of image restoration would be image blur removal okay for some reason if we have blurred the image then we can remove that blur from the image okay so restoration basically attempts to recover an image that has been degraded by using a prior knowledge of the degradation phenomena Okay. Now there are different techniques for image restoration. Okay, if the noise is additive noise, okay, if the degradation is due to additive noise, then that is when we use spatial filters, okay, spatial processing. But if there is an image blur, okay, if the degradation is due to image blur, then it becomes difficult to remove it with the help of spatial filters. So that's when we use frequency domain filters. Okay, and what is image denoising? It is the process of removal or reducing the noise content of the image. Okay, so basically reducing the noise content is known as image denoising. Now let's understand a diagram here. We have f of x comma y which is our input image. It is degraded using a degradation function h. Okay. And then in the next step, noise is added. So you know, eta of x comma y is the noise. And this is added to the original image, which makes it g of x comma y. And then after that, using some restoration filters, the image is uh, revived back or restored back to its original state. Okay, so the degraded image in the spatial domain is given by g of x comma y is equal to h of x comma y into f of x comma y plus eta of x comma y where h of x comma y is the degradation function and it is convoluted with the original image plus the noise is added so here you can see h of x comma y is the spatial representation of the degradation function and the degraded image in the frequency domain is given by g of u comma v is equal to h of u comma v into f of u comma v plus n of u comma v okay so this was the image degradation and restoration model now let's move on to noise models but before that what do you think is image noise image noise is a random variation of brightness or color information in images okay it is usually an aspect of electronic noise and it can be produced because of image sensors or circuitry of a scanner or digital camera. So you know you can consider image noise as that undesired fluctuation of color or luminance that obscure the details of the image. Okay now what are some of the sources of noise? So we have image acquisition, digitization and transmission. This is mainly where the image noise is produced and also image sensors. So here noise occurs due to environmental conditions and by the quality of the sensing elements. Next what is white noise? In signal processing, white noise is a random signal having equal intensity at different frequencies giving it a constant power spectral density. The Fourier spectrum of noise is constant. So you know whenever that undesired random information is added in your image and it is mainly used in signal processing that is white noise okay it it comes in equal intensity but at different frequencies now let's move on to the types of noises the first one is gaussian noise random noise that enters a system can be modeled as a gaussian or normal distribution and this noise affects both dark and light areas of the image the PDF or probability distribution function of a Gaussian random variable Z is given by 
P of Z is equal to 1 by root of 2 pi sigma e raised to minus Z minus mu the whole square by 2 sigma square where Z is the gray level mu is the mean of average values of Z sigma is the standard deviation and sigma square is the variance so this is caution noise next we have impulse noise it is also known as short noise salt and pepper noise and binary noise it occurs mostly because of these sensors and memory problem because of which pixels are assigned incorrect maximum values so the pdf of bipolar impulse noise is given by p of z is equal to p of a for z equal to a p of b for z equal to b and zero otherwise if either p of a or p of b is zero then the impulse noise is called unipolar noise now let's look at one important question which is usually asked in the exams why is impulse noise known as salt and pepper noise if neither of the two probabilities pa or pb are zero and especially if they are approximately equal impulse noise values resemble salt and pepper granules randomly distributed over the image for this reason bipolar impulse noise is also known as salt and pepper noise so if you remember the old tvs uh, sometimes they would go all black and white okay it would show small black and white dots or granules on the screen so that is uh, the sort of picture then you can imagine uh, the image looks like with a salt and pepper noise next we have poison noise this type of noise manifests as a random structure or texture in images it is very common in x-ray images the pdf of the poison noise is given by p of z is equal to np raised to z e raised to minus np by z factorial where n is the total number of pixels z is the gray level and p is the ratio of noise pixels to the total number of pixels okay so this was poison noise next we have exponential noise this type of noise occurs mostly due to illumination problems and it is observed in laser imaging the pdf of exponential noise is given by p of z is equal to a into e raised to minus a z for z greater than or equal to 0 and the value is 0 otherwise where a is greater than 0 now the mean is 1 by a and the variance is 1 by a square so this was exponential noise next we have gamma noise also known as Erlang noise this type of noise also occurs mostly due to the illumination problems the pdf or probability distribution function is given by p of z is equal to a raised to b z raised to b minus 1 by b minus 1 factorial into e raised to minus a z for z greater than or equal to 0 and the value is 0 for z less than 0 where a is greater than 0 and b is a positive integer okay so what are a and b here see a is the minimum gray level value and b is the maximum gray level value and if we are calculating the mean and variance, mean is b by a and variance is b by a square. So this was gamma noise. Next is Rayleigh noise. This type of noise is mostly present in range images. The range images are mostly used in the remote sensing applications. Okay. So the PDF is given by p of z is equal to 2 by b z minus a e raised to minus z minus a the whole square by b for z greater than or equal to a and the value is 0 otherwise if we have to calculate the mean and variance the mean is a plus pi b by 4 the whole root and variance is b into 4 minus pi by 4 so this was really noise next is uniform noise it is also a very popular noise which occurs in images where different values of noise are equally probable okay and it occurs because of quantization noise the pdf is given by p of z is equal to 1 by b minus a for a 
less than or equal to f of x comma y less than or equal to b so f of x comma y is the image okay our input image and zero otherwise the mean is a plus b by 2 and the variance is b minus a the whole square by 12. Now there is also this different type of noise known as periodic noise which arises typically from electrical or electromechanical interference and it is reduced significantly via frequency domain filtering okay so these were the different types of noises now we look at the graphs of all these noises now when you're given a question where you are given an image and you have to identify the kind of noise in the image that is when these histograms will be of use so what you need to do is you need to draw a histogram of your input image okay and then you need to compare that histogram with these histograms present here okay and whichever of these is similar to that histogram then that type of noise is present in your image so please keep in mind these or histograms are very important so please make a note of this the first one is of Gaussian noise okay next one is of Rayleigh noise this is of gamma noise exponential noise uniform noise and impulse noise okay so these are the different probability density functions now sometimes you might get a question to identify the type of noise in an image but you won't have the image as such okay so that is when these applications will come to use so you know sometimes in the question itself they have given the application or the source of the noise okay so in that way you can identify the type of noise which is present in the image so here I have written down all the noises and where those noises are mostly found. Okay, so the first one is Gaussian noise. It's found in electronic circuit noise. Okay, sensor noise due to the poor illumination or high temperature. Okay, next is Rayleigh noise found in range imaging. Exponential and gamma noise is found in laser imaging. And impulse noise is found in quick transients such as faulty switching uniform noise it is the least descriptive so if you have got no idea about the type of noise present in the image okay it is none of these and it is the least descriptive then that is when it is a high probability that is uniform noise and this is the basis for numerous random number generators okay so in this way you can identify the different type of noises in the image that's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next one.